DC has plenty of well-written female characters to explore, whether it would be via several solo series or team-based books like the Birds of Prey that give light to what these characters can offer to the wider DC universe. So it's a shame how much these heroines are neglected in outside media and in a sense become some of the most underrated characters in the entire catalog due to how little they're utilized. Casual fans will have a very surface level understanding of who these female heroes are, or you'll have situations where executives and studios pretty much set them up for failure by associating them with bad products. It's like you can't produce a female-led superhero project without some backlash. And sure, you'll have a loud minority of fans in any medium that will moan and complain about a female character on their screen. Do I have to play as a girl? Can I play as a guy? What's wrong with you? But a good amount of complaints stem from simply bad writing and execution with some of these movies and shows. There have been more misses than hits with some of the more recent superhero projects with female protagonists, which creates a false perception that these characters just have nothing to offer, or that it's nearly impossible to make a good movie or show with a female character. You look at Marvel, for example, and how Black Widow didn't get her own solo movie until a decade after her character first debuted in the MCU. Too little too late, because Natasha Romanoff already died in Endgame. The Winter Soldier Civil War era was the perfect time to release a Black Widow movie. But a big reason as to why she never got her own movie for so long was because you had executives like Ike Perlmutter insisting a Black Widow centric movie wouldn't sell well. This was a shared mentality across the board, driven by the fear that female led projects wouldn't make enough money. That is until the success of the first live action Wonder Woman movie. The first Wonder Woman movie ended up being one of the most successful and profitable movies in the entire DCEU catalog, ranking as the third highest grossing out of 16 movies. With how studios like to operate, you'd think Wonder Woman would be promoted more prominently in the public eye as they usually wait to see if a character will actually resonate with the general audience. You look at how much WB has tried to shove the Suicide Squad down our throats ever since the 2016 film released with Will Smith and Margot Robbie. I'm talking getting their own AAA video game, their own isekai anime and everything. Even after the negative reception of the first movie, the team still got a second chance under James Gunn. This is also the time where where you'd see the heavy push of Harley Quinn. They are really trying to convince you that she's one of the top female DC characters to ever exist. No, no, no. No, not, not, not you, Seamus. I like Harley as a character, and on paper, it isn't an issue to see her get some of the spotlight. The issue stems from how she's the only female character getting this much attention from DC, more so than freaking Wonder Woman. If it was Wonder Woman getting so many modern adaptations and an animated series with five seasons, it would make all the sense. She's the most iconic and influential female superhero in comics. There's no debate about that. On top of being a third of DC's Trinity, but they certainly don't treat her as such. Even though the first Wonder Woman film was successful, they never truly capitalized on the movie's success. I mean, yeah, the film got a sequel, but it was some booty cheeks every step of the way. They never explored her more in animation, they don't push her nearly to the extent of Harley Quinn. Let me list real quick all the DC characters that have gotten or are rumored to be getting an animated series before Wonder Woman in the past few years or so. Obviously Batman and Superman with Batman Caped Crusader and My Adventures with Superman. The Harley Quinn show is supposed to air its fifth season later this year and the spin-off show Kite Man Hell Yeah aired earlier this year. Yes, they made a whole separate spin-off show about Kite Man. There's also the Suicide Squad Isekai anime. Blue Beetle is getting his own anime-inspired series in James Gunn's DCU. Dead Man is rumored to be getting an animated series in that same universe. Creature Commandos is the first entry in James Gunn's DCU, sort of serving as an appetizer before the full course meal, which is Superman. I kid you not, there's an entire children's cartoon with two seasons centered on Batman, Batgirl, and Robin's vehicles all coming to life like it's a Cars Pixar movie or something. Bat Wheels, I think it's called. It may not seem like a big deal that Wonder Woman has never gotten her own animated show, but it's problematic due to how little of Diana's mythos has actually been explored. The average person legitimately cannot tell you about who she is as a character, her supporting cast, or her villains. It's gotten to a point where you will have people on some Tom Fool will be talking about some, Wonder Woman doesn't deserve to be a part of DC's Trinity. It should be Batman, Superman, and The Flash instead. Look at me! Oh! 
Toyo Hill, some people complain that she's too boring or she has a pretty bland rogues gallery. That right there represents everything wrong with how Wonder Woman has been depicted because the only reason you think she has bad villains is because you don't even know her villains. <laughs> If you're willing to dig deeper, you come to understand that Wonder Woman actually has some pretty interesting rogues. They're just never used or adapted correctly. Let's take Dr. Psycho for instance, a telepath who can manipulate realities of those around him and create mind altering illusions. And bro is just a raging misogynist, like imagine if Neurotic was a DC villain. I thought it was so satisfying to watch all those people die! And that's when I decided to hate women. Wonder Woman's mythos and being so heavily tied to Greek mythology allows her to go up against powerful magic users or Greek gods like Ares, the god of war, or Circe. It's also nice to see whenever her combat abilities are put to good use, being noted as one of the top combatants in DC. Veronica Kale, Giganta, Cheetah, Silver Swan, Dr. Poison, and they say Wonder Woman doesn't have any villains. I think it's tripping. Like I said earlier, Wonder Woman is just part of the larger problem of not using the vast roster of characters characters that are just sitting on the bench. Hey Warner Brothers, I think a Zatanna solo project would be pretty cool to see. Oh okay, you, you said you wanted a Harley Quinn season 5? No, I okay, uh, what about the Birds of Prey? Showing some pretty cool characters like Huntress, Black Canary, and Barbara Gordon as Oracle. Where, where, not? Nah, I got you, you said Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn? Wait, the what? So, no, nigga. You said make Harley Quinn the main character and sideline the most prominent members of the actual Birds of Prey team from the source material? That, that's what you ordered, right? Oh my god. Uh, okay, hey, you know what? I like anime. You got any more of those projects like Catwoman Hunted? Let's see. Hmm. Only character in our catalog that could work would be. Ah, here we go. Harley Quinn and the Suicide Squad. That's some bullshit. I feel like Harley's the Batman equivalent for female characters in terms of the sheer disregard for DC's other heroes in service of more of her. Even though there is an overabundance of Batman projects, they keep making them because. Batman's DC's biggest moneymaker, but does Harley Quinn generate enough profit to justify this level of attention? I'm genuinely asking because a hypothetical solo Harley Quinn movie in the DCU, for example, wouldn't be as big as a Wonder Woman solo movie. I feel like the DCEU already proved this. I think there's a lot of missed potential in understanding the popularity of notable female heroes. For example, I'd say the Teen Titans cartoon from the early 2000s put the team on the map for casual viewers, or even if it's Teen Titans Go, considering that show has been around for over a decade, Starfire and Raven have become pretty recognizable characters over the years. I don't go to a lot of them, but whenever I do end up at a convention centered on a piece of nerd pop culture so to speak, I'll see a handful of Starfire and Raven cosplayers on a consistent basis. I was at RDC's DreamCon not too long ago, and despite it being mostly centered on content creators, anime, and gaming, I would constantly see Starfire and Raven cosplayers here and there. They've been consistent members of the Titans cast for decades, making their way into numerous adaptations. The DC AMU tackled the team in a couple of movies where Starfire in particular held more of a leadership role, being this mother-like figure for the younger generation of heroes like Beast Boy, Raven, Blue Beetle, as well as helping Damian Wayne when he first joined the team to better work well with others. Also, Starfire in that universe was a whole freakazoid. How about we do that move you taught me last weekend? I admire your boldness, but what will the team think? What? <laughs> you lasted far longer this time. I meant in training, of course. He's very proficient when we have- Corey! It is kind of a shame though how little Donna Troy has been used, despite being a founding member of the original Teen Titans roster. On top of being a part of the core cast of legacy characters alongside Wally West, Flash, and Nightwing. But it's a Wonder Woman character, so what do you expect? Batgirl and Supergirl are without a doubt the two most iconic DC heroines right next to Wonder Woman. Some of the negative stigma surrounding female heroes in media unfortunately centers on projects featuring these two, or what some writers like to do with either character. What is with the obsession in writers having Barbara Gordon in a romantic relationship with nearly every male character in the Bat family. I talked about it in my problem with Batgirl video with how much she's been passed around amongst the Bat boys and joked about oh what's next her dating Luke Fox only to find out that she actually did have a relationship with Luke Fox as Batwing for a brief period in the new 52. A big example of some of the problems in writing female protagonists are the shows in the CW Arrowverse. Randomly enough I remember this thing Stephen Amell said about the impact and popularity of the Arrowverse that had me dying out laughing when I first heard it, saying that Arrowverse is the first thing that comes to mind when people think of DC. You know, when people think about the most recent iteration of DC, okay, they don't think about the Snyder Cut. They think about the Arrowverse. Uh, 
you're a liar. Stargirl is one of the rare exceptions because that show is actually pretty good, but the network even before it became the CW did a lot of those female characters dirty. Supergirl after the first season, ass. The Birds of Prey TV show, ass. The Batwoman, hell, even the Gotham Knights TV show. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Some of my biggest complaints with Batwoman, other than the fact that it's poorly written, is how they depict Katherine Kane herself. Instead of trying to make her stand out and convey what makes her have any value in the Batman mythos, they try to market her as a female Bruce Wayne. I need you to fix his suit. The suit is literal perfection. It will be when it fits a woman. You're a female Bruce Wayne. Awesome. Hilarious. Handsome. I'm not sure who you're trying to cater to. I don't know anyone who wants to watch someone who's just a gender bent Bruce Wayne. Take the lazy route, why don't you, instead of showing what makes her different from Batman in the comics, the type of villains she encounters that are different, or her personality traits. It honestly does a character a major disservice. I don't hate her as a character, but the same problem also extends to Supergirl because they just make her a female Clark Kent. They practically have the same personality, same approach with their disguises, wearing glasses and all. Kara even works as a reporter for for a media conglomerate owned by Cat Grant, who used to run the gossip column at the Daily Planet. Kara even had a close relationship with Jimmy Olsen while they both worked for Catco Worldwide Media. Although their relationship was a bit, uh, different to say the least compared to the Clark and Jimmy dynamic. At least Supergirl had Superman show for some episodes, whereas Batwoman just states Bruce Wayne mysteriously disappeared. Taking into account the show's dookie levels of writing, Batman's absence was probably for the best. The DCEU attempted to push Batgirl and Supergirl, but since this is Warner Brothers we're talking about, it never worked out. The Batgirl movie infamously got shelved for a tax write-off, and Supergirl from the Flash movie was reportedly going to have her own feature film after the Flash. The studio took the wrong approach in trying to implement Batgirl and Supergirl because they were going to be used as replacements rather than fleshing out their mythos alongside the heavy hitters like Batman and Superman. A DCEU with no Henry Cavill as Superman, a mid-tier actress for Wonder Woman, and a 70 plus year old Batman because Michael Keaton originally would have been the primary Batman for a little while after The Flash. The upcoming DCU thankfully will have Superman and Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow back to back with Supergirl being the second film in between the shows releasing like Lanterns or Peacemaker Season 2. The Supergirl film is being described as a different take than what most people envision when they think of Superman's cousin. She's much more hardcore and not the Supergirl we're used to since she was raised on a rock off Krypton and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life, then came to Earth. To further highlight the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents from the time he was an infant. Shame we never got to see some of the other cool heroines in the DCEU because so many projects that would have featured them were cancelled. Zatanna movie? Cancelled. Wonder Twins? Cancelled. Black Canary? Justice League Dark? Never saw the light of day. One of the few that did release was the Birds of Prey movie, but again, it's it's just a Harley Quinn movie featuring the Birds of Prey. Complete piss poor adaptation of Cassandra Cain. I don't even know why she's in the movie. If you wanted to make a solo Harley Quinn movie, then just do that. I don't see the need in adding in the Birds of Prey if you're not going to do them justice. Another issue you run into is that you don't feel much excitement seeing the actual Birds of Prey members band together on screen because you don't spend enough time with them. Huntress doesn't even appear until over halfway in the runtime and doesn't do anything of significance, nor has anything that makes you attached to her motivations or character. A lot of the characters like Huntress, Black Canary, or Renee Montoya I don't think are bad in the movie, but the writing doesn't give you much reason to feel anything seeing them together because at the end of the day, Harley Quinn is the star. It's essentially Harley Quinn and friends. The Birds of Prey team is a pretty cool concept in the comics and would make for a banger TV show or movie if done right. It's usually a female group of vigilantes that run covert missions across the globe. It started out as a partnership between Oracle and Black Canary, where Black Canary would tackle missions and Oracle would be her watchful eye. Huntress was sent by Oracle to aid Black Canary after she was kidnapped by Savant which led to Huntress being a main member of the team. Black Canary, without a doubt, is one of the coldest female heroes in DC, constantly being noted as one of the best fighters in the whole verse. Received training from her mother, who was the original Black Canary during the JSA days, Wildcat, and even Lady Shiva, just to name a few of her mentors. It's also kind of funny reading some of the pre-New 52 Birds of Prey comic issues. Birds of Prey artists try not to be horny challenge impossible. It's like anytime Black Canary or especially Huntress are drawn, you gotta have a few mandatory booty shots. Like, what is the purpose of this shot in particular Brody, bro took every chance possible to demonstrate such artistic mastery in drawing the curvature to thy liking. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. <laughs> it was especially bad once Cheshire and Lady Shiva started popping up in the mix. Like why are Dino Laurel Lance's booty chicks all over my goddamn face? God damn! 
I was like, damn, nigga, what you doing out here with all this ass? Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon, hella ass. The sun is still out, my nigga, and it, uh, it was just, it, it, I'm, I, I don't know what I mean. Birds of Prey book almost turned into a goddamn cheesecake factory. DC should release an omnibus of Gail Simone's run and just title it Cheeks of Prey Volume 1. I feel as if female DC heroes actually have the potential to stand out on their own, but because writers nowadays lose nearly all brain functionality when writing female characters, many people don't recognize that to be the case. It just comes off as studio heads or people in the writer's room overcomplicating things when incorporating a female protagonist into a movie or a show, thinking they have to fill a quota or check a few boxes for some higher up. Like the blueprint is already there buddy, just read the damn books. Also, can we stop with the whole blaming fans of a superhero movie bombs in the box office that centers on women? Blaming sexism on the underperformance of Birds of Prey or the Marvels for example is flawed logic because every movie with a female protagonist should underperform by those standards. There does exist a section of fans out there that will throw a hissy fit if there's a movie or show centering on women, but you can't honestly believe those people have so much influence to cause a multi million dollar production to bomb at the box office. The Marvels didn't flop because the male fans hated supporting women or whatever. You can't honestly believe some people on the internet convinced millions of people worldwide to not see a movie. A lot of the casual audience are not chronically online in the geek fandom space. If they have no interest in watching something, that's just the way it is. Blaming the lack of interest on a project on blatant sexism does more harm than good because if you unironically want a studio head to see that the negative reception of a movie is based on audiences not wanting to see women in leading roles, which obviously isn't the case, they're more likely to make less projects on those characters. Just accept that something wasn't good and ask for a better product.